Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and I'm at the 2023 Motorhome and Caravan Show at the NEC. Now we've already seen and shown you a lot of the new product that's being unveiled here to the public. Vehicles like the Bailey Endeavour, the Swift Voyager 4 Series and Auto Trail's brand new XL. But there are still models that we haven't shown you that even we haven't seen yet. And those are going to be in this video today. Now, one unexpected highlight is Bailey's Allura, a brand new range of compact, low-profile coach built on the Ford Transit chassis. Three models, all 6.99 metres long and with a three and a half tonne maximum gross weight. Now, this is the 69-4S, which has a transverse double bed at the back. There are also single bed and island bed models. Price of this one is 75,499. Up front, the Allura has the popular side-facing settees, but underneath those are fold-up rear travel seats, so you can carry two rear passengers. Got a big over-cab sunroof and nice reading lights in the cab as well. And then this unusual extending table with these extension leaves at either end. At the rear you have a transverse double bed alongside the kitchen and unlike a lot of Continental models the kitchen does have an oven and grill and a mains hot plate. Over on the other side well the washroom design takes some inspiration from the Endeavour with this timbre door and a sort of shared floor space with a carpet area that expands the sort of general living space in the back of the van when the washroom door is open. There's also a rather neat folding step arrangement, double steps to get into bed and then alongside that some very neat pull-out storage. A bit over a year ago I was very impressed with Coachman's first motorhome, the Travel Master, and that went on to win our luxury motorhome of the year. Now Coachman is back with another new model, the Imperial 845, an 8.82 metre A-Class on Mercedes-Benz. Right hand drive but with Continental handing, unlike the low profile models, and priced from 201 thousand pounds. Because the Imperial is again built by Carbe, it has the same class leading insulation but there are also some nice features on the exterior like this gas compartment where you can rotate your cylinders for easier changing. And then in the deep double floor, not only have you got plenty of storage, but some of it slides out for easier access. Yes, it's a substantial price, but that does include everything you see as standard, from the electric remote control awning on the outside to the electric drop-down bed in the cab, and of course leather upholstery and naturally Aldi heating. Amidships you have a generous kitchen area with composite worktops and a microwave because of course the Coachman is designed to suit the UK market. Lots of drawers in the kitchen and all electrically central locked. Over on the other side a very generous fridge freezer with the oven above. And then as you step back through the van, well of course the toilet door closes off the back of the vehicle. Importantly you've got a very generous shower area on this side and then as you step up into the island bedroom at the back, well the bed slides forward and flattens or in this position you can sit up to read the newspaper. At the opposite end of the price spectrum from the Coachman is this new model from Benimar, the Benivan 144. Now there are actually two models, there's a slightly longer one as well, but this starts at just 55,495 for the 6 metre model. 
Inside the Benivan, it's the classic continental layout with a transverse double bed at the back. Half dinette lounge and full height walk through into the cab. The kitchen will have an oven in production, but it also has a 137 litre fridge, really generous for a camper van. And the washroom's quite impressive too, with an opening window and a fixed corner basin. Another surprise at the show is two Iveco based panel van conversions. This is the 710 IFLG and this is the 710 IFL. Both of them 7.27 metres long, so very long for a panel van. Prices start at 94,495, but spec, as you see this one here, just over 121,000. Up front, the IFL is classic IH campers. So you've got this really generous L-shaped sofa facing the sliding door, so on a lovely sunny day, what better place to sit? If the weather's not so good, you might want to turn around and watch the TV. And you've got an expansive kitchen area there with a generous washroom beyond. The kitchen has a generous worktop area, more worktop if you use this flap, and the cooker not only has a mains hot plate but separate oven and grill. And then unusual double doors lead into the washroom area, which has a wardrobe here at the side. So it's a changing space as well. But the really interesting thing with this van, because of the extra length, is what's in the back. This is a van that you won't be short of storage space in. So this is the alternative FLG layout in the same length Iveco van. So it's smaller lounge, but again, a massive kitchen. Look at all this worktop space. Well, I don't think I've ever seen anything bigger in a panel van. But then at the rear, you have fixed single beds, nice and easily accessible, not right up high, TV at the foot of the bed. Very comfortable place for your bedtime. The IFLG might not have the full height garage of the IFL, but still, it's not exactly short of storage. So we're back on the Bailey stand, and I think this is almost certainly the only electric camper van or motorhome at the show. It's the Endeavour EV, and no, you can't buy it. If you could, Bailey reckon it would be about 75% more expensive than the diesel powered Endeavour that you can buy. But this is more than just a show vehicle. It's a test bed for the future and allowing Bailey to try out things. That, because obviously with an electric vehicle with all the batteries in the floor, you can't start drilling holes in the floor for ventilation, fitting seats and water tanks and all that sort of thing that you do in a current camper van. So great to see Bailey looking to the future basis of the Endeavour EV is the electric version of the Ford Transit, the current Ford Transit, and range, well, yeah, we know it's not enough at 108 miles, but of course in a few years time there will be a new generation Transit and that will be all electric from day one, so by then hopefully we'll have the battery technology and so on to give you a much more realistic range. Interestingly, inside it's not just another Endeavour. There's a different layout to this rear lounge with a TV stroke workstation opposite. So this could be a mobile office as well as a camper van. And also there's different materials in here. A lot of recycled plastics used for worktops, upholstery and so on. So it's definitely looking at a more sustainable camper van future. I love the look inside this concept endeavour, this electric vehicle, and it's not just electric driving, but electric cooking too. There is no gas, no fossil fuels used anywhere in this vehicle, so induction hob and then this Bosch microwave. 
I hope this interior design is a hint of what we're going to see in Bailey campervans in the future. Of course, the Endeavour that you can buy is here at the show making its debut. Now, you'll already have watched our exclusive preview of the B62 rear lounge model, which we tested in Morocco. Now, there's also the B64, which has a front lounge, and it's a four berth with a pop top. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring you that, a full review of that in due course. Another brand new camper van at the show is from Rolling Homes, a company best known for its Transporter T6 T6.1 conversions. Now this is on the Crafter, 6.8 metre Crafter. It's the Darwin, priced from 99,995. Although this one, as spec here, is around 118,000. Inside the Darwin is quite like any other camper van of this size on the market. It's a completely different layout. Now you've got the kitchen around the sliding door area and it's a split kitchen with this lovely Corian worktop with the uh, solid cover for the sink on this side by the door. And then over on the other side you've got a high microwave oven above the part induction, part gas cooker, and an oven below that as well. Of course, you can press a fridge under the wardrobe at the front. And then you move back and you've got these long settees, sort of almost amidships in the van. Now they're quite long enough, I think about six foot two, so plenty long enough to act as single beds, or you can use infill sections and the backrest to create a huge double in this area. Beyond that, you have the washroom with the domestic toilet and a separate shower on the other side. Now, now, in production models, you will be able to order a washroom like this or have access through to the back doors. That will be another option. So that's the Rolling Homes Darwin, a completely different layout and a completely different type of camper van from this brand, but still with this beautiful European oak furniture that is such a Rolling Homes trademark. A very different crafter conversion on the six metre van is this grand adventure from CJL Leisure. Just look at it. Prices start at about 122,000, but this one is 147,900, but that is fully loaded. This is the 180 engine automatic gearbox and well, it looks the business. Round on the other side, you've got a ladder to get up, um, load surfboards and whatever on the roof. You've got the spare wheel on the back. It certainly has that rugged adventure look to it to go with the name. So the interior on this grand adventure is quite stunning. There is almost a sort of military feel to the colour of this, well, very swish upholstery and this sort of camouflage effect on the headlining. We've got beautiful woodwork tops, a fridge that you can get at easily from outside with the doors open either way, induction cooking and then of course your very generous fixed double bed at the back with the pods on either side to give it the uh, length you need for the bed in a crafter but all beautifully finished as you'd expect at this price point. This is an incredibly high spec camper van. 250 watts of solar on the roof, 460 amp hours of lithium batteries and a three kilowatt inverter obviously to power the induction hob amongst other things. And then there's some really, really thoughtful details like these storage bags. So you pack at home, Every bag has a colour keyed home in the van, so you never overpack. And, well, if you've got kids that like to take too many toys, well, you give them a bag, and that's your space, and then it just slots into the van. There are also some lovely details in the kitchen, like this slide out worktop, and even pre fitted cutlery and crockery. At the back, there's a huge garage area. Now this version has a slide out tray for two bicycles and then a big portable fridge on the other side. And you've also got 
chair pods on the back door. Or maybe this version is more to your needs. Four bikes in the garage. Again, these removable storage bags on the back door. Again, you just lift those off, take them indoors to pack. And in this one, you've also got a changing mat and a pull-out outside shower. And this is a new item from the marine industry, not, we believe, previously seen in the campervan market. What a van! It's great to see Euromobile back at the show with three models, and we particularly uh, were taken with this Integraline 695 LF, seven meter A-class with a particularly spacious interior, priced at 122,495. Now, inside this Integra line, it feels incredibly spacious for just a seven metre van. And that's because the main bed is this drop down in the cab, manually operated, but a good size bed. And then you've got these really long side settees that hide fold out travel seats underneath. And then at the back of this Euromobile, you've got a very generous washroom area with a separate shower. But the novelty is in the wardrobe where you have these rotating sections that actually you just pull your clothes closer to you and use this as a changing room. So that's the Motorhome and Caravan Show 2023. We've only been able to give you some of the highlights but Gosh, there are some exciting new vans here this year. Maybe if I win the lottery at the weekend, I'll spend £579,000 on that 10 metre Morello Empire liner behind me. But I think actually more likely is that I'd spend it on that CJL.